Welcome, yogis, back for round two. And um, today we are going to help you set up your yoga space for your online classes that will be starting in April. So we'd like to chat to you about some props that you'll need, um, as well as your space that you're going to set up at home um, so that you can practice. So uh, setting up a space doesn't have to be stressful or a certain uh, space. It's always nice to be mobile because you may not have the space where you are to set up a permanent yoga space for you to practice. So uh, being mobile is often a lot better, so we'll chat to you that. Um, the first thing that we use a lot in our yoga practice is blocks. And the blocks that we use are, oh, there's so many options. So the ones that we use in the studio are these ones, the cork uh, blocks that you're familiar with. And the ones that we use uh, in the park yoga or in the um, clubhouse are these foam blocks. Uh, you also have wooden blocks that are a different shape. You can see they longer and narrower. These you can buy pretty much anywhere at any sports shop, uh, sportsman's warehouse, Mr. Mm -hmm. Price, anywhere. You can also buy them online. Some of the specialist ones, like the core ones, you can only get online. These are from Earth Warrior. So you can order them online. Uh, just to make sure that if you do buy them, the blocks are costed per block. So you have to order two and you have to make sure that the price obviously is double. They, the core ones are a lot more expensive than the phone ones, but you can chop around. You don't, however, have to buy or invest in any one of these because you have household items that can work just as well. So normal books, you can use stacking books on top of each other and making the height as high or as low as you like with books. These are really practical to use. Uh, and then today I found these in the garage. These are just paintings, which are really awesome as well because they're the same height and they crack nice and heavy and your hand can fit onto mm -hmm. that to bring the floor closer for some of the poses mm -hmm. that you could do. So uh, there are many household things that you can use. Just make sure you're stable and then it's not a rickety mm -hmm. setup so that you don't topple over. And that they're the same height. Yeah, and the same height. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's with regards to blocks. Yeah. And then we use, um, we use bolsters. Yes. And <laughs> we use bolsters and meditation cushions for our practice as well, especially in here. So um, Janita sells these beautiful meditation cushions. Um, if you're looking to get yourself one and invest in one, these are really great to use. Um, otherwise, the bolsters, you can also find different shapes and sizes. This one I got from Desha. Um, otherwise, Monet also set, uh, sell a whole lot of uh, different shapes and sizes um, of bolsters. Or uh, Believe the Beat, another yes. website online. that you can That's get right. it online. Yeah. Correct. So these are great to use in your yin practice or um, even just a support in Shavasana, which is really great. Yeah, or to meditate. If you That's want right. to use that as a meditation cushion, that yeah, is great. So. Absolutely. If you don't want to invest in a meditation cushion or a um, bolster, you can always make use of what you have at home. So we've got two blankets that we've just stacked, which will give you height to sit on if you need a bit of height and also a bit of support when you're doing your yin practice. Um, otherwise, another option is just some firm pillows that yeah. you could use. Yeah. And um, we also have the eye pillow, which are also really great to use in Shavasana or in your yin practice. It just um, allows you to go in a little deeper. Um, this is one that we have, but um, I've got a few in the studio. Monet sell a few. I think a lot of you have bought already, but if you're looking um, for some, you can just chat to myself and we can arrange that for you. Um, yeah, so that's what we have here. Cool. Uh, the other thing that we use a lot is straps. These are the straps from the studio. Uh, you can also buy these online on any one of those uh, yoga sites. Uh, make sure though that if you do buy it, you buy the one with a double ring metal uh, clasp at the end because this is great to fasten a loop in your uh, strap if you need it for longevity, mm -hmm. uh, you don't necessarily need it. 
If you don't want to invest in the strap, a tie works just as well. So when you are in a forward fold and you need to bring your feet a little closer, you can use a tie to give you a long spine. You can even use a belt. So using a belt does exactly the same thing so that you're helping your spine to stay nice mm. and strong and straight. So those are the straps. The straps, again, you can buy uh, online, Billy the Bee, yeah. Monet, uh, Sportsman's Warehouse. Yeah, Mr. they Price. pretty much. Just note the buckle. So yes. if you are going to buy one, uh, buy one with the double. Absolutely. The double top. Um, then setting up a yoga space in your home may be a temporary thing every time you practice. And that's why it's sometimes nice to just have a little box of tricks like I do here. Um, and in the box, you can just place all the things that you feel make it your home practice in your home studio. So in my box, I have a, a singing bowl. This is mostly useful meditation, um, but you can do actually a meditation using your own singing bowl by just playing the singing bowl. Uh, and it's a wonderful meditation with the vibration of the sound. But even if you don't, and this is just symbolic for you, then that is something you can place um, around your mm. yoga space. Uh, the next thing that I have in my box are mala beads. The mala beads can, uh, they're made from anything from wood mm. to semi-precious stone to uh, yeah. some are plastic even. That's right. Um, mm. There's Quite various a variety. different kinds, mm. yeah. Uh, when you are buying mala beads, uh, just count the beads. There should be 180 beads mm. on uh, your mala bead string. Your mala beads are really nice to use when you're doing a, a meditation practice that involves a mantra, uh, as some of you may be familiar with, but we can go through those in the meditation mm. tutorials. You don't need this again. This, for me, is a reminder of my practice. This is the reminder of my seat as mm. the teacher in my practice. So this is entirely up to you as well. Uh, what's next? So um, some candles. candles. So, yeah, uh, we always love lighting candles in uh, our practice. So these little votive candles are great mm. uh, because they kind of last for the duration of your practice. It's lighting just the fire of your practice inside mm. you and as a reminder. Um, and yeah, putting the candle out after your mm. practice, maybe. So, if you, yeah, so when you light your candle, set your intention and um, allow that to be the intention for your practice. Um, allowing the candle to burn throughout your practice. When we get to the end of the practice, we never blow our candles out as we blow out our intention, but rather just use your fingers you can either dip your fingers in some water or just lick your fingers and then gently um, let the flame go that way. So we, we're not blowing out what we are invoking in, um, in our space. Or leave your candle burning mm. just to uh, infuse the world or your community with your intention of your practice. Just if you do do that, just remember to burn it in a safe space. Mm. So placing it where you can see it and be reminded that mm. there is a candle burning just from a safety point of view. But it's great to just keep the momentum of your resolution and your practice mm. going with the candles. Mm. Um, the next thing I have in my bag of tricks is some essential oils. So if it's the expert on that. So maybe you wanna just uh, chat through some of the yeah. oils that we have. So those of you who have practiced with me will know that I, I love using essential oils in the classes and there are different ways to use them. You've got to find an oil that really resonates with you. And um, uh, I know incense is uh, also in our box, but if you are sensitive to smells or to incense, you are most welcome to use oils. Um, I've taught some of you how to do some energy work with the oils before your class starts. And it's something that we will use in our online classes as well. Um, but just breathing it in, just allowing, placing a drop or two of oils onto your hand, breathing it in, just um, sweeping your aura with the oils is a beautiful way of infusing these oils into your practice as well. And again, just using what resonates with, with you. Yeah. These oils, they've all got 
super powerful um, properties and emotional properties as well. So um, there's so much to learn about these oils. So if you are interested in the oil, please feel free to contact me and um, we can arrange some for you. Um, I spoke as the expert on oils. I like to use insects. That's in my box of tricks. There's uh, these awesome little wooden sticks that you can just burn the incense in. These are a dime a dozen. Um, and then incense as well. They're available pretty much everywhere. Um, the masala ones are definitely the better ones. They don't have a smoky residue and they also burn a lot longer. Um, so look out for masala incense if you are going to buy some. So if they wanted to buy, where would you suggest they buy uh, Probably the Bliss Munger. You can buy that online mm. as well. You can order from them and they deliver to you. Mm. So that's, uh, I think Faithful to Nature has yes, they do. That's right. As well. And probably Billy the Bee. Yeah. Yeah. So there are different okay. options to get incense from if you want to burn that. Um, so and I both use incense in our classes. Mm. We often use Absolutely. that. Uh, symbolically as well, it is a symbol of, again, mm -hmm. your intention, infusing your practice with your intention um, and burning away some of the negative residual energy that sits around you prior to you coming into your practice. Which brings us to the next little tip that we have here, which um, is really great. So if you can see that. Yeah. So we have a stick of uh, Palo Santo here. So Palo Santo is a type of wood. And we often infuse our space with this um, smudge stick. Um, it's used to infuse our energy um, and just to bring us into our space. So what we do is you'll um, light it with a, a match or a lighter until it starts to glow. Um, and once it starts to glow and it's burning really nicely, um, it will eventually go out and start to just um, smoke. And what we do then is we smudge ourselves. We um, create this smoke um, all around us. You smudge your family or your friends that are practicing with you so that we can infuse our energy together as we um, practice. And again, it's just creating space, drawing your attention. Whenever you smudge, you always um, put your intention into it so that it's all pure from the heart. Yeah, just a note on mm. intention. Um, your intention doesn't have to be a really complicated no. long intention. We always, uh, or not always, sometimes when the teacher says, uh, come your onto, your motion, uh, onto your mat and set your intention, you think, oh, God, you have to come up with an intention. Yeah. Don't let it be stressful. Mm. An intention can really be something as simple as being present mm. or something as simple as uh, just bringing love into your heart. It really doesn't have to be complicated. No. And if you use the same intention for every single practice, that's cool. Because all you're mm. doing is manifesting and reinforcing mm. that intention in every practice. So Absolutely. don't feel pressurized about mm. coming up with something different every time. Mm. It really has to be what feels right in that's your right. heart at that moment, what you need in your practice at that moment. Mm. And what or, resonates with exactly, you. Exactly, and what mm. resonates with you. So mm -hmm. there really doesn't have to be uh, any pressure around that. Mm -hmm. Also, um, practicing yoga is never perfect. Uh, as earlier when I was trying to set this up, I had kids and dogs full everywhere and mm -hmm. it just sometimes becomes cluttered and confusing. Mm -hmm. So it is important for you to set boundaries mm -hmm. and parameters Absolutely. with the people that you share a space with. That's right. Yeah. So if you are going to create a space at home and your family are not joining you, then make sure that they're aware that this is your hour, um, regardless of what time of the day you decide to practice. The online classes will be available for 24 hours. So you get to choose when um, in the day you want to practice. And you set that boundary with your family and say, well, this is my hour. This is what I need. Please put a, a, a no disturb sign on the door or like um, Jan suggested, invite them to join you. Exactly. So this is a nice time for you to maybe introduce your family or the people that you share a space with to your practice. And why this is so important to you, it is a beautiful way of introducing them to your uh, passion for practicing yoga. Mm -hmm. So give it a go. They may not like it and just have no judgment. Mm -hmm. Introduce them, have no expectation, 
see if they like it. If they don't, that's cool. It's still your practice. Absolutely. So yeah. um, I think the crux of it is not to take yourself too seriously. Mm -hmm. Practice as best you can. Practice as often as you can. Mm -hmm. And uh, not being in a class environment with a teacher may feel strange in the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, and it's strange for us too. It's yeah, strange for us really not is. to have the community of our students yeah. around. But we are bringing you this so that you can continue. Practicing. Absolutely. And hopefully um, in the very near future that we can get back to yeah. our uh, classes and actually connecting with you. But in the meantime, we're here to support you on your journey um, and practicing at home um, with us. And um, hopefully whatever you are doing at home will start to spread out to the rest of your family members and they will see the changes happening right in front of their eyes. Um, and this is what's happening in our world at the moment. Change, big transformation. So yes, we are here to support you and we're excited to offer this. So I think in our next tutorial, we will um, walk you through the whole um, uh, kind of booking process. Yeah, how and, to set up online, yes. what apps to download, That's how to right. connect it all, how to book, how to, yes. yeah, we'll uh, go through Absolutely. those steps in a few So weeks. one step at a time, get your yoga space sorted out at home or at least have your little box of um, things that have meaning to you that you would use in your practice and uh, we will meet up with you again soon to walk you through the next step. So until then, we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.